welcome back to another episode of Steel Strategics. Today, we're going to talk about chasing the dot. I've still been getting questions. I know I covered this briefly before in previous videos about chasing the dot, finding your red dot in your pistol. For those of you who don't know, red dot is a sighting system that we put on top of pistols. It started off in rifles back in the day and it just gradually transformed to be onto pistols. Red Dots originally was not made for pistols, they were made for actually rifles and long guns and we just started incorporating them into pistols because we found a lot of well, shooters before me, more experienced shooters found out that having a Red Dot system actually dramatically helps improve your time and finding the target and just being able to be quicker to put rounds on target. One of the misconceptions, one of the major misconceptions about getting a Red Dot is that people think that Oh, if I buy a red dot, especially if it's a big name brand like Trigicon, I'll be a better shooter and I'll become a faster shooter because I got an awesome red dot system on my pistol and yes and no. Like I said before, red dots is going to help you acquire targets faster. It's going to help you transition to targets a lot more faster and a lot more smoother with a red dot because it's just, it's just easier and faster to find that dot and follow that dot or lead that dot, as I like to say, because you want to lead the dot, you want to move your eyes onto your next target. You know, while you're moving your eyes, you're moving your, your pistol, and you're just following that dot to the next target. A lot of um, complaints and a lot of messages that I get that people hit me up personally asking me about red dots is, a lot of people say like, I just can't find the dot. When I draw my weapon, I just, I'm just sitting there forever trying to, to find a dot. You can tell people who are not used to using red dots because Especially on the range because they'll draw a weapon and then, then boom, all of a sudden, they fire their weapon. You see them like draw. And the reason why they're taking that long is not because, you know, they're working on the fundamentals, they're working on the breathing and steady aim and inhale, hold your breath, squeeze, pull the trigger, boom, exhale. That's not what they're doing. When you start shooting for a while, it just comes automatically. You, once you shoot and you get your technique down, you can be quick in the draw. And you know, like, you know, I gotta hold my breath, pull the trigger, bullet recycle in this target, hold my breath, pull the trigger. So, when you shoot for a while, you're used to your routine and what you do and how to get to that target. Let's dive into it. Let's dissect the problem that people have. One of the main problems that people have, like I mentioned, is finding that dot. You draw your weapon, you put your weapon on target, and now you're searching for the dot. One thing that you can do to help eliminate that is just practice dry fire. Practice drawing your weapon at home. Let's say this is my first time picking up an RMR. My first time using an RMR and a pistol. The first time, let's pretend I don't have any experience with using RMRs or shooting RMRs. Like, you're a new user, you just put this on your pistol, you get it, you're like, all right, awesome, man, I can see the dot now, that's pretty cool. One of the things that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you get yourself a quality holster. These are my favorite concealed carry holsters, the Mechanitech Sidecar type holsters. And not only do I like the look of them, but I like the comfort, especially the Kenetech Flex. And I just like that it can, it flexes and it moves with your body. So it, it makes it more comfortable. This is just my personal favorite. It doesn't have to be Tier 1 Concealer. You can go with We Are The People. You can go with whatever holster company you choose to go with. Holsters, it, it, to me, it's, it's just personal preference. It doesn't matter. As long as they can carry your gun securely, it's made out of Kydex, a strong quality Kydex, and it's built to block your trigger. It's just built for when you reholster for safety. That's all I care about. I, I don't care about all the extra stuff that people talk about like, oh, there's no reason to have an extra magazine in a sidecar. You could tell, some people will say, if you carry a, a, a sidecar type holster that you don't have no training, you don't have no skills because supposedly the experts say that, you know, it's better to get your magazine from somewhere else. And I mean, whatever, man, it's all personal preference. Whatever, dude. Whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Carry whatever holster you're comfortable with. It doesn't matter if it's this one. The only thing that I suggest is that whatever holster company you go with, whatever holster design you go with, especially if it's in the waist and it's appendix carry, just make sure it's a good quality kydex holster. Quality kydex. That secures a weapon. That, you know, make sure that it has a good securement in there. You can turn it upside down as, and the weapon's not going to fall out. Just make sure that the holster secures your weapon. And it's all about safety. With blocking the trigger guard, making sure that it's wide enough that when you slide your gun in there, nothing's going to 
flap back over and pull the trigger where you put your gun in. Just make sure you have a quality holster. That's the first thing. It doesn't matter. These are Mechanitex. I love Mechanitex. They're my favorite concealed carry holsters. If you don't like it, cool, whatever. I'm not telling you this is the best holster on the planet or whatever. These are just my personal favorites. Step one, get yourself a nice quality holster. Step two, you want to literally practice drawing and presenting your weapon because when you create that muscle memory drawing your weapon, it just falls on the dot. It just you just fall on that dot. It just comes up properly. For me, I already know my my draw. I'm trying to stick this, I'm trying to stick my shirt in between this so I don't have to keep moving the shirt out of the way, but it keeps getting caught up. So work on your draw. That's the first thing. This is a technique that I used when I first started learning how to shoot red dot. What I would do is you draw your weapon, you find a target, whatever your target is. Let's say I'm gonna use my camera microphone on top of my camera. That's gonna be my target. What I do is this is literally what you're gonna do. You're gonna relax yourself. You just wanna always make sure that you relax and you will saw, you control your breathing, you're not all amped up and crazy because if you're amped up and crazy, every little movement you make is gonna, if you move the gun a little bit that way, the dot is gone. You know, move it a little bit that way, the dot is gone. You move a little bit up, the dot is gone. Move a little bit down, the dot is gone. You wanna calm down, first of all, you wanna make sure you're, you're nice and calm, working your chi, woo sa. Calm down, calm yourself down, make sure you're not all shaking and PGD or whatever. So if you're drinking coffee, and you're doing whatever and you're all amped up, you're drinking any drinks and you're amped up, that's not the best time to train to learn to find a dot. So you want to make sure you're calm, nice and calm, control your breathing, and then you find a target. Like I said, the target is going to be the microphone on top of my camera. I'm going to draw the weapon. I'm going to aim for that little microphone on the camera. And if when you draw your weapon and you aim and you do not see the dot, if you don't see the dot, just re the weapon and do it again. Holster again. For like right now, it's a little bit off to the left. I can still see the dot, but it's off to the left. I'm not gonna take that shot. I'm just gonna reholster my weapon. And I'm gonna draw. And just keep doing that until you find that dot. So when you first draw your weapon the first time, you're, you're gonna realize that you're gonna be off to the right or off to the left. For me, in the beginning, I would always be off to the right. And I'll be sitting there looking for the dot. And then when I bring the gun back to the left, oh, there it is. You, you, you wanna notice that, you wanna pay attention to when you draw your weapon and you can't see the dot, when you find it, take your time, when you find it, where did the dot come from? That draw, the dot came from the top left. But that's not my regular draw, I just did that for demonstration purposes. When I would draw my weapon, when, when I first started drawing, it would always come from the bottom right, which is your left. You guys' left, my right. So the sight would always be in the bottom right, so that tells me when I draw my weapon, I'm pushing off to the right. You want to take a mental note and you want to remember that. When I draw my weapon, it's off to the right. Okay? You reholster. And what you do when you holster, make sure that you don't turn the weapon to the right. So you keep it as straight as possible. So that's what you're doing when you're dry firing. You're learning your mistakes. So I learned that when I draw, I used to tilt my gun over to the right a little bit. So when I draw, I subconsciously know that. I gotta straighten out my pistol, I gotta straighten out my jar, and boom. Right now, because I'm doing it slow, the dot literally came from the top of the sight and I just brought it down. It literally was on the top and I just brought it down because I saw it on the top and I just brought it down onto target. And that's what you wanna do. You're not gonna, every single time you draw your weapon, you're not gonna perfectly draw the dot directly in the middle of the glass. That's not gonna happen, not every single time. For the most part, when you practice and you draw, it's gonna land somewhat in the middle of the glass, of the RMR, but it's not gonna always do that. That's when you make your little adjustments. That's the whole point of practicing and working on your draw. So when you work in your draw, it's right there, and now you can adjust it. By the time you push out, when you pull your weapon up, you grab your weapon, you should already be looking for the dot. But when the weapon is right here, when you're right here, I'm gonna do it again. When you're right here, you should already be looking for that dot. When you see it, by the time you fully extend it, that dot should be placed directly on top of the target. So you're gonna draw, you're searching, searching, found it, dots on target. And that's how you practice. And you start off slow. You don't have to start off all super fast and you don't have to be super speedy Gonzalez drawing your weapon. My shirt keeps getting in the way. I should've just turked this one in too. Start off slow, take your time, draw at normal speed. I'm not saying go super slow and, cause you're just cheating yourself because you're not gonna be moving that slow. So move at a regular normal speed, but don't be trying to go all fast. Don't be trying to be all quick draw my god and shit. Just draw your weapon nice and slow, smooth like you would. Find a dot. So when you work in that muscle memory and drawing your weapon, like I said now, my dot literally comes from the top of the glass and I just bring it down to the middle by the time I extend it out. 
So by, so when I draw my weapon, it's at the top. The dot is literally on the top of the glass. By the time I extend, I just put it right down on target. That's the movement. I'm gonna move the gun so you can see how, how much movement I make. Normally when I draw, this is where the dot is. The dot is normally above my front sight. It's usually above my, about 98% of the times when I draw my weapon now, the dot is above my front sight. So it's above right there is where I normally draw. So by the time I extend out, I see the dot. By the time I extend out, I bring it down and it's on target. I forgot I'm aiming at the microphone. I was aiming, I'm so used to aiming directly in the middle of the camera. I'm, doing, I'm aiming at, I should be aiming at the microphone. Draw my weapon and it's right there. So this is the movement it's going to make. So right now the dot is on top, is above my iron sight. If this, if this is my front iron sight, the dot is, the dot is right here. So what I'm gonna, so what I do by the time I extend out, I just bring it down and I put the dot right on top of the front iron sight. That's one of the things that you want to work on. You want to work on when you present your weapon, where's your dot? If your dot is off to the left, when you practice your draw, you want to make sure that you kind of come back more to the right. If you draw your weapon and the dot's to the right, you want to make sure you want to make sure when you draw, you kind of keep your gun straight and bring it back to the left. So that's one thing that you work on. You first realize where is your dot? Where are you aiming your gun when you present it? Where is it aiming? And when you find out where you normally aim, mine, like I said, mine was the bottom right. So I know that I aim to the bottom right. So I know when I draw my weapon, I have to bring it more to the left. The dot is just right there and it falls on the top. So I want to show you how much movement I actually make by the time I draw my weapon and I see the dot. I already see the dot. I already see the dot. So this is where the dot normally is when I draw my weapon. By the time I get about 80 about 90 percent to where i'm 100 percent extended my dot is right here so all i have to adjust is just i bring the gun right here that's it i don't know if you saw that i'm gonna put it back up that's where it normally is when i draw by the time i actually land on target fully extended i bring it down that much that's how much it has to move just a little bit just like that this is the top it's on target the top it's on target it's on top target let me do it on this side so you can see that's the top it's on target. When I draw, this is normally where it's at. By the time I extend out, it's on target. So that's how much it moves. This little movement right here. This is it. This is it right here. So that's how much the gun moves. Whenever I draw, the dot is usually right above my front sight. And I literally, by the time I extend out, I just bring the gun down. It's a little technique. So for what works for me, I don't know if it's going to work for you, but... When I draw my weapon, since now my dot is right above my front sight, what I do is when I draw, I squeeze my pinky finger in. And when I squeeze, I don't know if you see what happens when I squeeze my pinky finger, but when I squeeze my pinky finger, I'm going to try to... It automatically, let me see if you can see from this side, when I squeeze my pinky finger, you see what it does? It brings my hand down. My hand is right here. When I squeeze my pinky finger, it brings it down a little bit. Just a little bit. You can barely see it. But when I squeeze my pinky finger, it brings the rest of my hand down. My hand is like this. When I squeeze, it brings it down like that. It's up, squeeze. So that's what I do when I draw my weapon. So when I draw my weapon, I draw, I see the dot, and I just squeeze my pinky finger, and it just drops the dot right down onto target. Do it again. I, I do it without realizing. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm overly ex squeezing my pinky and it's dropping a dot down. That's what you train. You want to train to create that muscle memory. I do it so much that I don't even realize that I do it. So when I tell people, it seems weird because it's like, but when you squeeze your, like, look, just, just go ahead and put your hand into a gun type of motion and then squeeze your pinky finger and see what happens. When you squeeze your pinky finger, it drops, it drops your gun. It drops your hand, like the rest of your hand, when you squeeze your pinky finger. So that's what I do when I draw my weapon. I just draw, and I'm squeezing, and I'm right on target. I just, a, just a little squeeze. My squeeze and your squeeze might be different squeeze, so I, I can't tell you squeeze it this much or squeeze it that much. You have to figure out how much you have to squeeze your pinky finger to get that dot on target. I would just go, squeeze, boom, it's on target. Boom, it's on target. Getting back to the technique, I, I keep I'm I'm all over the place. When you draw your weapon and you find your dot, you pull the trigger. If you draw your weapon and you don't see your dot, you just reholster. Don't even pull, don't even waste your time. Just reholster until you find that dot. And that's gonna train you. You're gonna learn. Like I said, 
I don't know which direction you're shooting in when you first draw your weapon. I don't know where, which direction your gun is pointing. If it's pointing this way, that way, this way, that way. Only you are going to know how you draw your weapon where it's pointed. So once you figure out which direction it's pointed and you start working on it, that's how you work on centering the dot. By just drawing your weapon and just adjusting your draw. Boom, it's right on target. Draw your weapon and put it on target. And if the dot is there, you pull the trigger, recock, do it again. Draw your weapon, it's on target, pull the trigger, recock, do it again. Now, if you draw your weapon and you can't find a dot, you don't see the dot, just reholster. Just, I don't see the dot, reholster. Just breathe, take your time. See the dot, pull the trigger. This shirt is super annoying right now. Doesn't want to cooperate. I'm going to draw your weapon. If you see your dot on target, I don't see my dot. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm just going to reholster. You see the dot, pull the trigger. I didn't see the dot. I was off way to the left. And it's because I'm thinking about it. Like I'm, I'm in front of the camera and I'm thinking about it. So now my, my aim is all over the place. And that's when you have to just woosaw. Calm down, calm yourself down, because I'm getting a little antsy right now. Just draw. If you see the dot on target, pull the trigger. If you don't see the dot, just reholster. And just do that however amount of time. If you, if you want to stand here for an hour and just practice it in your draw, that's what I do. You just practice your draw. Just do whatever. Draw. If the dot's there, you can pull the trigger. If it's not, don't pull the trigger. That's all you do. You pull your dot. You pull. If you don't see the dot, you reholster. I saw the dot in that one, but I'm just demonstrating. If you draw, you don't see the dot. I did that one on purpose. I was aiming somewhere off the left. I'm pretty sure a high left. You don't see the dot. You just reholster. You get. You see that dot? Pull that trigger. And that's, that's basically uh, finding the dot technique that I use. Like I said, when you first pick up your red dot, you're going to be all over the place. You're going to be looking for it. And just focus, just pay attention. When you're searching for the dot, pay attention to where it normally is when you draw. For me, it was always to the right, the bottom. So I knew when I draw, I have to kind of twist my hand a little bit more to the left since it's to the right. I have to twist my hand a little bit more. And you just adjust your draw. And that's how you learn how to find a dot. Hold it. Boom, it was right. It was right in the money. It was right in the middle of that one. It was a little bit right about the side. I saw it. I had to bring it down to the left a little bit. It was right about my front side. I just had to bring it down a little bit. It was right on the side. I was, I'm used to shooting directly in the middle of the camera lens and I told myself I'm shooting on the mic so I'm, I'm just I'm aiming at the camera and then I'm bringing it back up so I'm wasting time doing that because I'm confusing myself with the targets but it doesn't matter just find one target whatever target it is when you find that pull that trigger I saw the dot it was off to the left but I bring it back and I, it, to me it took too much time so I'm just gonna reach I'm just gonna just not pull the trigger and do it again And that's what, you, that's what you're working on. Every time I draw my weapon, the dot isn't always going to be there. For the most part, it is. I would say about 98% of the time, the dot is somewhere on the glass. And I, I just have to adjust it a little bit, bring it to the middle. But there is that 2% chance where I don't see the dot. When I'm practicing, I don't see the dot. I just reholster and do it again. Sometimes I'll see the dot off to the left. A lot of the times it's off to the left. And I bring it back and it's like, eh, I don't like that. It took too much time, so I don't even pull the trigger. And what you're doing is you're creating that muscle memory and you're conditioning yourself when you go to the range with live rounds that if you don't have a good sight picture, you don't take the shot. So you're also conditioning yourself. You're not only practicing and learning how to draw your weapon or present your weapon, but you're training yourself. You're conditioning yourself that if you don't see that dot, you don't pull that trigger. So that's one of the reasons why I think that this little technique and this little training exercise helps you find a dot and it also helps you discipline yourself to not take bad shots.
I'm just finding different targets around the room and I'm just finding that side picture, pulling that trigger. I didn't see the side on that one because I'm aiming at a new target so I, I aimed, I believe it was right low. So I'm just going to just restock, recock it. I saw it, I saw the sight, it was a little left, I don't like it, so I'm going to do it again until I get the sight more lined up with my irons, my, with my front iron sight. There it is. Move on to the next target. And you want to find multiple targets around the room, you don't want to just be aiming at the same one in front of you because in real life, somebody might be coming from that way, you got to turn that way real quick, and might be coming from that way, you got to turn, so you want to practice turning your body and finding different targets, not just the same one because if I aim at the same target every day for a week, I'm going to know exactly where that target is and be able to take that shot. I'm going to be perfect with that target. But then now if a target's over here and it's a little bit more lower to my left, now I have to adjust my sight picture to find that target. So that's why you want to practice finding different targets around the house at different heights. So you want to find a high target, you want to find a low target, you want to find an eye level target, you want to find a target. So you want to find different targets so that way you train yourself to adjust to whatever height and distance that target is. So I'm going to aim at this one. Boom, it's right there. This one, right here. Boom, right there. Aim at that one. The door hinge, I'm going to aim at that one. It was right there, but I hesitated a little bit, so I'm going to do it again. The microphone. The middle of the slide. Bag right here. I'm aiming at the logo on the bar. That, there's a bag in front of me and it has a, the R, the registered trademark logo. So that's what I'm aiming at. It's a little small little dot, but I'm aiming at. And that one's real tough because since it's a sm real small target, it's harder to find it. And I didn't even see the dot on that one, I'm not going to lie to you. And the reason why is because it's closer. It's, it's closer to me. It's about, I'll sit like four feet away from me. And it's a really small target, so now I'm used to aiming at bigger targets. Now that I'm aiming at a smaller target, I, the both times that I drew that I drew my weapon on it right now, the dot wasn't even on the glass. So that's what you want to practice. You want to find a target that challenges you, and you want to master that target. I thought I found it in that one. Relax. Boom. That target is challenging, so I'm gonna do a couple more to it. Uh, after right when I was pulling back, the dot came down, but I just recocked. Boom. Got it. Do one more time. Boom. Move on to the target. It's lower. I need to see the dot in that one. I'm aiming like it's on the ground. So it's like that would be like a dog level. If a wild animal attacks me, that's about where it's at. So this is at my first time I'm using this as a target. So. Boom, I found that one. The first time I the first time I drew it, I couldn't even I didn't even see the red dot. And that's what you're doing. You're gonna draw, you're not gonna see the dot. Reholster. Don't look for the dot. Don't chase the dot. Do not chase the dot. If you don't see the dot, you recock and you do it again until you find that dot. But never chase the dot. I'll find another target over there. The stand that I have sitting over there. So it's, it's kinda lower. I found the dot right when I was about to back up, but like I said, if I don't see the dot immediately, I just re I just restart. So I'm gonna do it again. Find the dot. That one. Do one more time. Boom. Little target on this side. It's a smaller target also. My first time aiming at this. I didn't see the dot. My iron sight was. My front sight was high this way, so I was aiming too high, so I got to bring it back down. So when you're drawing, that's what you're paying attention. You're paying attention to where your iron sights are, what you're aiming at, so that way you mentally you know what you got to adjust. Boom, there it is. So a lot of the times when I aim at a new target, I don't find a dot in the first draw. But then when I redraw, I get closer, and I redraw, and then boom, I'm on it. So by the time I do my third or fourth draw, I'm drawing, I'm landing the dot right on top of target. And that's what you want to practice. You want to practice shooting at unorthodox targets from different heights, different distances, because that's going to adjust, that's going to change the way how you adjust the pistol to get on that target. So anyways, I hope that this answers your questions. I hope that this helps someone. If it just helps one person to be a better shooter with a red dot, I'm content with that. I'm fine with that. 
I'm just here to help, I'm here to train, and I'm learning as I go, and I'm teaching you guys as we go, and I'm giving you guys a whole lot of free nuggets, you know what I'm saying? The goal in the future is for me to get my certified instructor for pistol and rifle. When I, when I become certified, I'm going to still be dropping little golden nuggets, but in order for you to get the real training, the real in-depth training of what we do, you're going to have to attend one of the classes. I don't have any prices yet. I'm not certified. I'm not licensed yet, so I don't care about prices right now. But when I do get licensed and certified, my goal is to be licensed and certified by the end of this year. That's my goal. I'm going to try to attempt to do it. I can't promise that I will. I can't promise that I won't. I'm going to try my best to reach those goals to be a rifle and handgun instructor by the end of this year. So take advantage of all these free nuggets that I'm dropping, all these free jewels. I'm, I'm giving you guys free game right now, but when I become certified, I'm still going to be doing little tutorials and little you know training videos and stuff like that. But if you want to get more in depth, if you want to get into the real meat and potatoes of the training, you're going to have to come to one of the training courses. I know a lot of you guys are in different states and stuff like that, but maybe one day I'll be able to travel and train and teach these courses. That's my end goal is to be able to travel and train and teach people in different states, cities or whatever. But for right now, I'm going to stay local. I have to stay local. I'm not certified. When I do become certified, I'm going to try to build up my reputation locally and then hopefully I'll be able to go national with it. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this little red dot series, how to find a dot, helped someone out there who's struggling finding a red dot on their pistol. I hope this helped. Don't give up. A lot of people get the red dots, they can't find them, they, it, they, it's hard to find the dot, and they give up and they sell it, you know, they pawn it or whatever. Don't do that. If you, trust me, once you master the dot, shooting is so much more fun and you become so much more accurate and so much more faster. But in order to get to that point, you have to train. You have to start off here just finding the dot, learning how to draw consistently the same way every time you find a dot and once you be once you keep practicing and you keep dry firing you slowly set your bar higher and higher and higher until you can find that dot in every draw and like I said when you practice don't practice on the same target in the same distance and the same height move targets around find different stuff you don't have to physically put anything you can find anything a wall outlet a, a light switch I looked at the door hinges I looked at this dot that my camera one of my tripods has I'm aiming in the middle of this light. I'm aiming at this bag that has a register, the registered trademark R logo. I'm, I, I aimed at the edge of this table that has a freaking coaster on it or whatever. Just find different targets from different distances and that's going to help you become better. If you sit there and you aim at the same target at the same height at the same distance, there you become a master at that. But then what happens when you go to the range and there's multiple targets at different distances? Now you're going to be sitting there looking for the dot all crazy in the range and they're going to be like, I thought you said you knew how to shoot. So practice at home, different targets, different heights, different distances. Like I said, I've been training with this pistol. I've been training with this dot. So I already know how to find my dot for the most part. And if I, like I said, if you pick a target and you draw and you don't see that dot, don't even take the shot. Just reholster it and try it again. Boom, you find that dot, take that shot. It seems like magic, but it's all your brain just calculating the distance calculating everything because you practice so much your brain know okay it's a little bit to the left now I gotta adjust to the right just practice 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 that's that's what's gonna make you a better shooter with a red dot that's what's gonna help you find a red dot is practice 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 and when you're done practicing practice some more that's it for today remember let's all keep America tactical fight for our second amendment rights because the powers of be are trying to take that right away from us don't let them take that right away from us. Fight for your Second Amendment rights. Help keep America tactical. That's it for today. I'm out. Peace.